Hey there! In this episode, we're going to talk about tune-ups. What exactly a tune-up is, why your car needs it, and how to do it. As you can hear, my Jeep is seriously out of tune. It needs a tune-up really bad. So let's talk for a second about what exactly a tune-up is. A tune-up is also known oftentimes as preventative maintenance. There are a lot of things on your car that need to be maintained regularly. Lots of fluids that need to be changed and things like that. Now, engine oil and tires and maybe brakes are probably some of the most common things that people think about, but there's actually more to it. So we're going to talk about how exactly to do a tune-up. Some of these things are easy enough that you could do it easily yourself. Others are a little bit more difficult and you may want to tackle it or you may want to take them to a shop. But we'll talk about exactly what those things are and when you should do them. I've had this Jeep for about six months now and it's going on 11 years old and has 111,000 miles on it. I'm not really sure what things have or have not been maintained by the previous owners, so I'm going to hit all of the major stuff. I'm also going to run a little bit of an experiment here. I'm going to see if there's any change after the tune-up in performance or in the economy of this engine. As a baseline, I measured the average miles per gallon in the city and the 0 to 60 time. It gets about 10.5 to 11 miles per gallon city and it did 0 to 60 in 8.1 seconds rather lethargic for this particular model. I'm going to break this tune-up into three different phases, and we're going to do one video for each phase. In this video, we're going to cover clean. The second phase will be replace, and the third phase will be lubricate. So let's talk about what each of these phases means. In phase one, clean, we're going to clean out the internals of the engine. We're going to clean out any carbon buildup inside of the engine that may be hindering its performance or its economy. In phase two, replace, we're going to replace any parts of the engine that may have been worn out. Generally, this means spark plugs or sensors or other small items like that. Uh, sometimes even alternators or water pumps can go out. In this case, I know that the alternator and the water pump are both fine, and I don't have any check engine lights from bad sensors, so we're just going to stick with the spark plugs. Depending on what kind of spark plug you have and what's recommended for your engine, it may be every 30 to 50,000 miles that spark plugs need to be replaced. We're also going to do a lot of lubricating. There are lots of parts that need to be lubricated. Engine oil should be done anywhere between 3 and 5,000 miles depending on your manufacturer. We also are going to replace transmission fluid, differential fluid, and transfer case fluid. Yes, you heard me correctly. I said differential fluid. Now, if you don't know what a differential is, don't worry. A lot of people don't, and that's why it often gets ignored. This is something that needs to have the fluid changed out every 30 to 60,000 miles, and I'll show you what it looks like. Ta-da! All of those fluids should happen between 30 and 60,000 miles. But if you look in your owner's manual, every manufacturer has different guidelines for maintenance schedules. Blah, 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 blah. Enough talking. Let's get to the tune-up, starting with the clean phase. We're gonna start with the air filter. This is pretty easy. We just need to snap open the air box, and then we can pull the lid off to pull out the air filter. This air filter doesn't look too bad, but I probably should get a new one. Wouldn't you know, I forgot to buy a new one before I did this, so I'm just gonna bang all the crap out on the driveway for now. Next, I'm going to use a product called Sea Foam to clean out the internals of the engine. I'll start by pouring half of the bottle into a plastic cup. We're going to use the vacuum line from the brake system in order to introduce the Sea Foam into the engine. It's important to remember that the engine needs to be warmed up for this. The brake booster is usually found in the back corner of the engine bay. It's this big bulbous thing with a giant tank on top. If it has a clamp, remove it. Mine doesn't, so I'm just going to start pulling. This may require a little bit of elbow grease, whatever that is. Finally, we're going to put a funnel into the tube so that we can easily pour. Now we'll start the process of actually pouring the seafoam into the engine. We'll want to pour it in very, very slowly. It will make the engine want to stall, but you want it to keep running. Once you get to the last little bit in your cup, 
pour the whole thing in in order to make your engine stall at the very end. Mine didn't, so I had to run and shut it off pretty quick. Now we wait about 10 to 15 minutes for the sea foam to soak in. Then we'll start the engine and let it run for 10 to 15 minutes. There may or may not be junk getting blown out of the engine in the form of smoke. If not, then you'll need to convince it by revving it just a little bit. Then after 10 to 15 minutes, take it for a spirited drive. Just drive it like you're mad. This is where the real smoke show starts. We'll finish off the process by pouring the other half of the sea foam into a full gas tank with a funnel. Each maintenance items have been done. The economic. And clean, we're going to clean the engine. Step one, cleaning out 